Welcome back to my channel and for those that are new, my name is Alicia and this is The Speechy Garden. I make weekly videos bringing all things related to speech language pathology, whether it's tips and advice for those thinking of pursuing the career path, to eventually bringing you guys through my journey in becoming an SLP. So if you're interested in seeing and hearing more of my videos, please don't forget to hit that bell for any notifications on when I post a new video. And on that note, we're going to jump in to today's video. I'm going to be sharing a bunch of tips with you guys on how to effectively manage and prepare for SLP grad school program online. So I'm aware that a bunch of you will be starting your SLP program this fall and I am so excited for you guys and I wish you guys all the best. But I've also heard some news that some of these programs will transition to an online format and will not be holding in-person classes at this point in time. Although this can feel a bit overwhelming and you may have some questions in your head about how to prepare, hopefully you will find some of these tips helpful and will give you a bit more reassurance and confidence that you are able to tackle your grad school program online or in any format because as SLPs we're flexible we got this so with that being said we're gonna jump right into the video let's go so my first tip that I want to share with you guys is setting a schedule so now with the transition to the online format and being at home it can be very easy to fall into a pattern of laziness and feeling unmotivated which can make us feel unproductive. So one thing I encourage you all to do if you haven't done so already is have a consistent waking up and sleeping schedule. As most of your classes will probably start at an earlier time in the morning, get yourself into the routine of starting to wake up earlier than you normally do and you want to follow a morning routine that will start your day off right. It can be as simple as making your bed in the morning. It's been said that if you make your bed every morning, you will feel so much more productive and you basically feel like you have your life together and who doesn't want to feel that way so make your bed allow yourself enough time to eat a breakfast a nutritious breakfast also you may hear this from your parents but make sure you take your vitamins believe it or not but vitamins will give you so much more energy to take on your day and you'll feel better about yourself mentally and physically as well now on the topic of waking up early if you are a morning person, take advantage of getting all of your assignments or your class readings done in the morning. It's also been shown in research that our minds tend to focus a lot more in the morning. So with that being said, if you wake up early enough and you get your readings or your class assignments started or finished, that's one major task you can check off your list and you're ready to go about the rest of the things you need to get done. One of the best ways for me to keep track of my priorities and make sure that I am where I'm supposed to be during that day or time is by having a planner. This is the planner I like to use because it's all year long. Most master's programs run all year long. So you wanna find an agenda or a daily planner that includes the summer months. And what's nice about keeping a planner is you're able to prioritize your tasks accordingly. Now, if you're somebody like me, I love to write things down because if I don't write it down, for some reason, I just don't remember. And you'll notice too, if you do this, when you're crossing things off of your list you will feel so much more productive and even motivated to get the remaining things checked off of your list. Another great way to organize your daily planner is by color coordinating your commitments. So for example, when all of my classes shifted to an online format a few months ago, I went into my daily planner and I wrote in all of the times that I had to attend a Zoom lecture online. When writing this down, I highlighted all of those classes in yellow. So when I go back and I look at my daily planner, I know that the yellow highlight means, oh, I got to attend a class and I had the time written right there. If you have other commitments, let's say you have a part-time job or you tutor or any extracurriculars, this is also something you can write down in your daily planner and color coordinate it in a different color so that again you know exactly where you need to be at all times. Now if you're somebody who prefers not to write things down and you're more a tech person no worries because we have the infamous Google calendars where similarly you can write down all of your day-to-day -day tasks and priorities and you can color coordinate those as well. So speaking from my own personal experiences in SLP grad school, you will be required to do additional readings. So these are typically posted in a course outline, which almost every class will provide to you. 
So I recommend once you get access to these course outlines to go through and look for additional readings that are required of you, any online quizzes you need to complete, any assignments, so on and so forth. The next tip I want to share with you guys is setting up a workspace. So choose an appropriate setting that has natural sunlight or decent lighting because if you're working in the dark, it can mentally make you feel more tired than you actually are. And so your focus will decline and your attention won't be as strong as it could be. You still wanna treat the online format as if you're sitting in class listening to your professor speak in front of you. Now, depending on your living conditions, if you're living alone versus with a family or with roommates, you might be limited, but try to make your space for being productive different from the space where you're going to relax, AKA don't make your workspace your bed. You get a little too comfortable and your mind won't be as focused as it could be if let's say you were sitting at a work desk. So a great product that I came across back in my undergrad is this thing you can buy which basically elevates your laptop and sit higher up on your desk so that when you are typing or using your computer, it reduces the amount you need to really look down at your screen. And if you're like me who sits at your computer for hours in the day, you will find that if you don't have one of these, that your neck will definitely strain and it hurts the next day. I'm going to link one down below that I really like from Amazon. They're super affordable and they will last you a lifetime. And on the topic of products, another really great thing to invest in if you're going to have classes online now are blue light glasses. Now these are the blue light glasses I have. They're very basic, clear. I bought them off Amazon, but they're super cute and they do the job for an affordable price and your eyes will thank you later because over time, if you're looking at your computer for hours on hours in a day, your eyes will feel fatigued. It just makes my eyes feel a lot more relaxed when I'm looking at a screen overall. So I definitely recommend investing in some. There are so many online that you can choose from. I will link the product down below. But with being at home and with classes being online, it's super easy to fall into distractions without you even realizing. So my advice to you is when you are doing a specific task, make sure you are dedicated that block of time to whatever it is you're doing. Be present, be focused, because at the end of the day, it's gonna save you so much time if you're involved in the lecture and taking notes actively, because later on, you're going to have to reteach yourself the content and that will be more stressful, especially if you have other commitments that you need to worry about at that time. So on that note, you also wanna minimize any other distractions that may be around you. This means don't have Netflix playing in the background or don't have any soft background music playing if that's something you like doing. So what I recommend is when you know you have classes or you have a meeting, make sure you're turning your phone on silent, on do not disturb, because if you're like me and you see your phone light up or you see a notification, you instantly have an urge to check it. So if you turn your notifications off, that will reduce the likeliness that you're going to check your phone periodically and it will just allow you to focus on your course content and the lecture at hand. And a pro tip for you guys, make sure you mute your microphone if you're not speaking during the class lecture because you never know, something can happen. So it's better to just have yourself muted and it minimizes distractions for your other classmates too. My next tip for you, which is one of the most important tips I would say is make sure you take breaks. Whether it's after a class, a meeting, an extracurricular, whatever it is, your brain needs that time to relax and recuperate itself. Because if you're constantly on the go and you're not taking any breaks and it's one class after another class and then a meeting and then homework and then and readings you will eventually be so exhausted to the point where your brain will just say I can't take it anymore doing this will lead to mental exhaustion that eventually leads to burnout and we don't want to be burnt out another great tip that I'm gonna share with you guys that my instructor actually told me about back when we had our classes online is the 2020 rule so what the 2020 rule is after 20 minutes of looking at a screen, you want to look away from the screen off to a distance for 20 seconds. What this does is it refocuses your vision and again, it just reduces eye fatigue and it gives your eyes a tiny break from looking at a screen for very long. It's also good to get up and stretch, sometimes even during a lecture if you're sitting and you start getting a little squirmy and you feel like your attention is reducing a bit, get up, do a bit of a stretch, walk around your house, 
go say hi to your dog. I don't know, just do something to get your body moving. I also encourage you to drink lots of water. If you're going to take a break after lunch, try going out for a walk, get some vitamin D, anything you can to kind of take your mind away from school and give yourself that mental break you need. And last but not least, my final tip for you guys today is have a good support system that can relate to you and you guys can support each other and get through those tough times together. Your classmates, for example, they're going to be your biggest support system because they're going through the same thing you are. When you're stressed about midterms and finals, they're going to be right next to you stressing about midterms and finals as well. And together you will all grow into the wonderful SLPs you all aspire to be. So that wraps up all of the tips I wanted to share with you guys and ensuring you are prepared and ready to tackle on your online SLP graduate program. If I missed any tips that you found were helpful when you had classes online, please feel free to share them down below so others can benefit from them as well. You guys are going to kill it in the fall when you start your programs. I believe in each and every one of you. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends who may be entering an online program as well. They may not even be an SLP. I find these tips are just helpful across a bunch of different programs. And the Speechy Garden has also entered the world of Instagram, so I'd love it if you could follow me there too at the speechy garden so that is all for now friends thank you so much for watching please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see and hear more of me and until next time i'll see you guys in my next one bye